Now, the current recession in Africa's most populous country has had an impact across all sectors. To discuss ways the ICT sector can drive economic growth, my guests are Olushola Teniola, President of the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, Ayotunde Koka, Managing Director, Rack Center, and James Agada, CEO, Computer Warehouse Group. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Morning, now, talking about Nigeria's ITC space, of course, no doubt it is one of the biggest sectors, you know, operating in Nigeria. But let's talk about, um, you know, the whole telecoms ecosystem or ICT ecosystem and how that has spurred growth um, over the years. I'm going to start off with you, um, Ms. Agada. So the biggest way um, we could see is the fact that um, we need to know about what is going on. Uh, I'm just taking a very simple example. And we need to know about what is going on. And today I want to buy a bag of rice. And I find out that um, I can buy a bag of rice from a bag of 10,000 naira. And how did I find that out? I was able to make a phone call to somebody who is in a bag of now, previously, the people in Abakliki were still producing rice, but nobody knew about it. Nobody knew what the price is. Most of it got spoiled in the farms because they had no access to the market. So one of the biggest things that ICT has done, especially communications in Nigeria, mm -hmm. is opening up that access to market. And I think that's also an area where there will still be much more growth as the penetration increases and people start recognizing the importance of knowing where things are. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about increasing productivity. It's about increasing access to markets. Um, not necessarily changing how the man farms his rice, but how that rice gets to the market and who knows about that rice. And therefore, if more people like me can buy his abakliki rice, then of course he can farm more rice. And therefore, his agricultural output grows. And if that agricultural output Grows, obviously the GDP also does grow. So that's, as an enabler, mm -hmm. that is how I see that contribution. And, and we can see it going down the line um, ever since the GSM became much more uh, available. Interesting. But Tenyel, I'm going to take you up on what he just talked about earlier, and of course penetration and how that has really impacted on a day-to-day -day living of um, most Nigerians. But how far gone are we in that sector? I mean, ever since the, ad the advent of um, the GSM, um, how much ground do we still have to cover in terms of penetration? Uh, there are about uh, 225 identified market gaps, and that has been recognized by government. We have 774 local governments, uh, communities, uh, and I must say, though that we've had a great increase in terms of our contribution to GDP as a sector, there are other areas that we need to cover, and those are the 774 local government uh, uh, areas. Okay. Um, and I think that some of the underlying uh, issues uh, that we are aware of, uh, and obviously some of them are recurring, if they're overcome, I think that there's a great opportunity to increase penetration. I, I believe that teledensity has been quoted anything from 100% to 108%. Mm. But when you actually break that down and you look at the number of handsets that each subscriber uses, you could divide that figure of 158 million subscribers by about three to four. Mm. Um, so you, you can see there's a huge area of underserved and unserved parts of Nigeria that still needs to be addressed. And I think that, uh, you know, the government itself is trying to bring in the Nigerian broadband policy, which essentially means building a national broadband network, uh, an MBN. Uh, and that is the real, really the fundamental building block and platform for anything to do with MBIOT or broadband IoT, which is Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, in Nigeria, it's not just unique to Nigeria. I, I know we, we're talking about Nigeria, but it's across Africa. We have a vast, diverse geographical expanse. Uh, we're looking at about 900 million devices by 2020. Uh, and we think that that can grow much, much more if we're able to tap into Internet of Things. Mr. Koka, what's your take? Um, very much agree with what um, Olu said. Uh, building on that, broadband is absolutely key. Connectivity. Data has shown worldwide that with 10% penetration, there's a very direct, um, about 1% or something like that, impact on GDP. I just take it beyond that. Um, there's, the ICT has telecommunications and other aspects of information technology as well. So we have a contribution of about 12.8%, I think it is, uh, of ICT. Of that, about 9.8% is um, 
telecoms. It's fundamental. Broadband, not just fiber, but broadband penetration underpins the connectivity you, you need for the economy. If IT actually, ICT as a whole, has a profound impact on the development of the, of the ecosystem in the economy, if you look at advanced economies, they don't uh, get the efficiency without IT. And Nigeria is well on that journey. Um, if we're going to have, for example, if we're going to have a strong currency, we need an efficient economy. To have an efficient economy, we need to enable it through ICT. All aspects of ICT, we talk about cloud, which is shared uh, um, uh, availability of um, different uh, uh, types of uh, IT services. Now, when you have an efficient economy, that means that your productivity is higher, which means, therefore, that for every pound of, of every naira of investment you put in, the output is significantly higher. It makes us competitive and we can export and it gives us stronger currencies. Countries like Germany and, and, and so on show that. So, it, it, for instance, we have about 19 million SMEs. I mean, they're corporates uh, as well. Those SMEs have to have uh, affordable services. And if you have cloud services, especially locally, which means they don't have to purchase them uh, internationally, that means we're exporting an area into dollars. You can spend that, but have local capability to drive efficiency locally. The systemic impact is significant. If only 10% of SMEs adopted affordable uh, IT uh, services, that means they become significantly more efficient. That means they become significantly more productive. That means, therefore, that the impact on the uh, um, country ecosystem is, is um, a shift, not just in the contribution of IT to GDP, which could grow to about 18% in the next three years, mm -hmm. if you add some of the other ICT components to it. It's also the indirect um, uh, impact on other verticals enabled through IT. Mm -hmm. So we see, I mean, we would see IT as being a significant uh, contributor to the uh, growth, direct or indirect, that we require in the country. We, we won't have any, a, a, a stronger currency if we don't have the efficiency. We won't get the efficiency if we don't have IT. We don't have accessible IT if we don't have local cloud services. So there's a whole chain of, of things uh, that, that come together here. And having significant broadband penetration across the country is key. means if it's key. That means, therefore, that the, the growth we have isn't concentrated on your Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt hubs. It means that Abakaliki, Aba, Aba for example, <laughs> is part of that chain and with solutions coming in where you know the value chain the agricultural value chain has been to an extent automated that takes out um, corruption it means therefore that products can be brought to Great. market quicker let, let me bring, let me so bring you mr um, agada here i've been talking about he just mentioned yes um, telecoms is just one part of it just help us break down you know um, the other components here i mean it seems when we talk about ict yes that's really where our mind goes to so just tell us whatever um, all the potential you, you know the sector has to to offer break it down for us I like your example of using the human angle example. I mean, that's relatable because it's all, you know, telecoms jargon here. So <laughs> break it down. Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. So telecom is one area. Um, well, I, I think I'll even turn it on its head and mm -hmm. say, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a technology area, there's a manufacturing area, and then there's the applications area. So you have the basic technology, which um, unfortunately we are not very big players in, um, but, but then that, that's also a huge area that ordinarily with our manpower we should be. Uh, you have companies like ARM or Qualcomm who are purely IP companies. They develop the technology and they license it. This is a big market, and, but that, and that underpins everything. Then on top of it, you have the manufacturing, which unfortunately we are also not good players. But if you consider that a company like Foxconn uh, has one factory that employs a million people. Um, and we buy all the phones in Nigeria, we buy all the components in Nigeria, and none of it is actually being manufactured <laughs> here. So, so we're also missing out. So we're mainly in the, what I would say, the applications area. Now in that applications area, you now see the people who are doing uh, telecom, doing various devices, um, the, those we normally classify as hardware. And then we have those who are working on, on, on the software bits, um, the various applications that, that people have, banking, 
whatever, mm -hmm. and all the software that is underpinning the, the, a lot of the startups in the country. And then also, you do have those who are providing us the infrastructure to make all this happen. So the infrastructure man goes and brings both the technology and the devices and puts it together and offers it in a way that it is uh, affordable for the rest of us. So those for me, those are the various um, areas. In terms of if you're looking for potential, uh, everything has to work together. Mm -hmm. Um, because we don't have the manufacturing base and we don't have the educational and research and development base, so both technology and manufacturing, unfortunately, are not contributing. So, Mr. Gad, how do we begin to turn this around? I mean, every time we have this conversation, it just, it's, it's the same kind of things I hear, and that's why I really wanted to hear from you, for you, for, for you to break it down properly um, for us, in order for us to understand you know, the potential and understand what this sector holds. But how long are we going to continue this conversation? How long are we going to remain consumers even in this space? Okay, it's a, it's a question of what we want to do. Um, like I said, Foxconn employs one million people in just one factory, but they produce all the iPhones and a lot of other things. What we don't have is the environment that will make it possible for Foxconn to come to Nigeria and say, let me build a factory. And I've had this experience a long time ago when we spoke with Dell uh, and uh, we wanted to start manufacturing computers in Nigeria. And after going through the business model and what's the quantity you need to manufacture and the power that you need and the cleanliness of the factory you need and the roads you need to get there, then you realize that it's um, quite difficult because you need to have that impact. We have, there's a, um, there's a company in Oshobo, is it Oshobo, yeah? Um, that makes some phones and laptops and we've had discussions with them. They do do some assembly, not, not really manufacturing, but even then, Foxconn, Foxconn does assembly. So if you're doing that assembly, you could actually employ a lot of so people. So how's that company faring then? Um, I mean, if, they, if I they're surviving, you know, what's the excuse for, for the others? That's what I really want to know. I think they are surviving. How well, I don't know. Um, because they've had a few contracts to produce a few things. They're actually talking about uh, expanding. And we want to talk to them because we want to do some manufacturing mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, not, not for computers, but some other devices that we've designed and, and we've tested and, and we still think we're going to manufacture them. We're going to be talking more about this, really, about how we can, you know, turn around this narrative from just being a consumer nation to even being manufacturers. I really want, let's just really get very real about this and let our next discussion be solution-based and let's understand what we need to do, what we're not doing, and when we should start doing it. Well, um, I've been speaking to Olushola Teniola, President of the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, Ayotunde Koka, Managing Director, Rack Center, and James Agada, CEO, Computer Warehouse Group. And still in our discussion, my guests are Olushola Teniola, La President of the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, Ayotunde Koka, Managing Director, Rack Center, and James Agada, CEO, Computer Warehouse Group. Thanks for staying with us, gentlemen. Well, um, Tenyola, just before the break, we're talking about changing the narrative from just being a consumer nation. I mean, ICT is big. We have people I like to call, um, what, technology freaks in Nigeria who are just waiting for the next app or next whatever and then they're jumping into it. And I'm saying, how long are we going to keep being at the receiving end? How about we start manufacturing for ourselves? What's your take? Um, I'm going to put another, another narrative on this because uh, I do believe that there are some success stories. Without naming names, I I'm, uh, have observed and actually been in conversations with the millennium the startups, the mm. new Y age, Y generation. And I think that we may be late in the OEM, that's the original equipment manufacturer cycle. Um, and we might be able to take some capital out of assembly. There's nothing wrong with that. I believe that is deemed as a mass market, maybe low technology uh, input into this very wide ecosystem. But as we move up that ladder or the pyramid, I think the new age is about um, the new areas of, sorry, I use technology, artificial intelligence, expert systems, big data. When we look at Nollywood and the masses of creativity that's just in that space, and this is physical intellect, 
we can capture that, digitalize it, store it locally, and create data currency. Data is the new black gold. On top of that layer in are the application developers, and they are significant ones. I mean, we know the uh, big e-commerce uh, platforms. We have fintech players, we have the mobile money players, and these are encouragingly being driven by Nigerians. We may not hear about them, but let's say one thing. The incubators, the venture capitalists that are predominantly outside the shores of Nigeria do recognize them. And we've got to start recognizing them. I think as a nation, uh, and I think Nigerians, we might view ourselves as conservative investors. So we tend to latch more towards the more guaranteed return on investments. But taking a bet on some of these early startups is a good thing. And it's positive, not all of them will succeed, but there'll be some new Facebookers and uh, Microsofts of Africa. And why do I say that? Because the creativity, we cannot underestimate that. And we had uh, Mark come over to tell us, we didn't need him to tell us that, it was already there. It's latent, we do, they do need strong leadership, and they do need guidance. And I think that that started to shape itself, but albeit in the early form, but I'm seriously encouraged by what I see. We, have we got to the end of the journey? Not yet. And I think this discussion and forum is timely because I think if you don't debate about it, those at the other end who are trying to attract the necessary funding to take them to the next level will not get a voice heard. Interesting. Oh, Mr. Coker, so do you agree that the focus right now should be, of course, um, in developing applications um, or rather than manufacturing, taking into consideration the challenges we have in that sector, the challenges that manufacturing space faces um, at the moment. Uh, what's your take on that? And while commenting on that, um, just talk us through some of the innovations in financial technology and how you think Nigeria has fared in that space. Okay, um, on the manufacturing front or assembly front, we have a couple of um, manufacturers, assemblers in Zinox and Omata computers and some other ones. So we have some capability here. But manufacturing isn't just about the physical things. Mm. It's about intellectual property manufacturing from that point of view. It's also about some other core infrastructure uh, that enables locally grown, locally hosted IT. And um, I run a company that delivers you know, high quality hosting capability here in Nigeria. We're delivering services here in Nigeria so you don't have to export. You have other fintech companies that really do um, uh, deliver some great innovation. Um, you've got, um, you know, quite a broad range, and some of them actually win international awards. Some of them export. Um, if you look at enablement through technology, especially in fintech, that quite quite a lot of the banking applications we have actually have leapfrogged what is available in Europe. So we we and some of those technologies actually been adopted by some of some of the European companies from Nigeria. So actually we are making some progress. Um, we have to continue doing that, creating the macro environment that allows us to want, not just thrive here in adopting fintech technologies, not just that, it's not just in finance, other technologies for manufacturing. Manufacturing has to adopt um, technologies to enable itself become efficient. Uh, E-government, uh, for instance, adopting technology, but locally here, that makes government become more efficient. I mean, two to three years ago, services would be bought abroad because we didn't have them here. Now, significantly more, we have services over here that are delivered from Nigeria that should be consumed here in Nigeria. But we also, in some of those areas of infrastructure, have the opportunity to export our own um, uh, services. Nigeria is blessed with geophysical location. We speak great English, we have very bright people. And as Olu said, I mean, if you look at some of these innovation hubs and so on, some of the developments, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next two years you see some great killer app come, come out that becomes, you know, the talk of the Alibaba or whatever of Africa, of West Africa. We have the opportunity to do that. We could outsource some of our call center capability. We have locally um, delivered call, um, outsourced call, call center capability um, by some you know, very good country, uh, companies. We need to not just look within, we also need to look out 
and being able to export those services. Mm -hmm. So some of them are real, some of them are the potential that we, we can actually uh, look to uh, unlocking. Um, locally delivered cloud services, for instance, are the enabling kind of technologies that are coming in right now, actually, that will shift the way we develop our technology capability mm -hmm. here uh, in, 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 in Nigeria. Now, Tanya, like you are, yes, um, you know, you're the president of the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria. He's just talked about the um, opportunities that lie therein. Mr. Gada earlier and also mentioned the fact that we must have a conducive environment for this particular sector um, to thrive. What's the association looking forward to from the government? But before you even answer, let me ask, do you think well, the, the new, I mean, the word in Nigeria now is the body language. Do you think, you know, the body language of, you know, of um, the government here in Nigeria really reflects the importance of, of ICT? Do you think it's um, a front burner in most of their discussions? What's your take? I think that the role of government, um, as um, Tunde has emphasized, the e-governance is a reality. Mm -hmm. I believe that the cost of running government can be reviewed more downwards, optimized, and the solutions are there. I think their fight against corruption is real. Again, ICT is an enabler uh, and a resolver of the issues that we all know how to plug the leakages in uh, our public purses. And the collection of taxes, again, is at the forefront of government's mind. That all encompasses a discussion around telecoms and ICT. It's a real growth area. Um, one of the things we try and do as part of ADCON is to ensure that government doesn't kill the goose that's laid in the golden egg. It's rare, you know, the balance that is required moving forward is to ensure that there is ubiquitousness in accessibility, affordability, and availability of what is deemed as a universal right in other parts of the world. And remember that a lot of our citizens are at the bottom of the pyramid, and that bottom of the pyramid needs to be addressed. So it's also from a security aspect, government is serious, and they're starting to have a relationship with our association that we've not had in the past. They're starting to listen to what we have to say. We also understand that we are at a point and a cusp and a, a position we've never been in the past where oil revenues are down, and will be down for a significant amount of time. So how do we diversify the economy in a speedy manner, but also fill the gaps that are currently available or maybe recognized as being there? But Tanya, the talking about the government services. listening to what you have to say, is the government also listening to um, your call for an increased um, current VAT by, say, 1% instead of the 9% tax the government is um, hoping to um, impose? What are they really listening to? What are your demands? I, I think um, they're not so much demands, but they're just uh, points of reason. I think that uh, recent uh, positions set by certain uh, individuals in the government is that uh, we should tax an industry and we're saying we shouldn't just pick on our industry it should be a wider net cast across the base so our suggestion of 1% on VAT is across the the base we have to recognize that VAT in Nigeria is the lowest in uh, in Africa so there is an opportunity to not only increase the number of taxpayers not just in telecoms but outside that sector, but also to review an increase in VAT, which can then be used by government to reinvest in building infrastructure, much needed infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I believe they are listening. They are listening. I, I think they don't have the exact formula yet, mm -hmm. and we'll work with them to, to, to arrive at the best formula. Mr. Hagada, do you think the, just on final note, do you think the government's policies are even encouraging? I mean, we do know the drama that played out with MTN, and they were talking about this 9% tax thing. Mr. Tenyola is really hoping um, that the government will listen on the 9% tax imposition, um, you know, we read about in the paper. So what do you make of the current policy in that sector? Uh, I think that, on one hand, some good noises are made, and on the other hand, some really frightening noises are made, mm. and the tax on uh, communications is one of those very bad noises uh, because it really, in my opinion, um, there's no reason for that. If we really decide to ap apply ICT, if you look at the Nigerian tax collection and VAT collection, is at 5% of our GDP. It's the lowest in Africa. Mm -hmm. It's one of the lowest in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And all you need to do is to be able 
to move that to the 15 percent or of thereabouts and you wouldn't need to even raise any new taxes and how do you do that you need to deploy ICT in fact we've made a proposition to the government and said you know there's an easy way to do this that doesn't require you to kill anybody run around pushing people all you need to do is to deploy ICT properly you capture all the transactions that are happening in Nigeria and you'll be able to apply the VAT even under five percent move the volume that you can collect so in one hand you hear the right noises in the other hand you don't know whether it's just body language it's been really interesting getting your perspective on ict here in nigeria as a tool for development i've been talking to lushola teniola president of the association of telecoms companies of nigeria ayotende koka managing director rack center and james agada ceo computer warehouse group